previously on Race to Mars. And we have ignition for the first human expedition to the planet Mars. Godspeed, Terra Nova. Houston, Terra Nova, we are go for abort to Earth sequence. The MI abort card sequence up. Chinese lander has touched down and is operational. But down here, it's like the old days of Project Apollo. Race. First to find water, first to find life. Glenn told us not to land. No, he advised us. This mission is a go for Mars capture. Sixty meters. Dead center, my friend. We are the first to come to Mars. We will not be the last. Congratulations, everyone. All right, on my three, two, one, pull. Hero me. Drill lowered. Drilling initiated. Hey, guys. Look at this. That is huge. Electrostatic discharge. Uh-oh. So what's the diagnosis on the drone? The electronics look totally fried. So that's it? We have no drill. Of course we do. I know where we can find one. Cheap. Madam Secretary General, Madam Prime Minister, all three Mr. Presidents. It's important that you understand that we are not naive in making this request. No major voyage of discovery has ever been free of political motive, and we certainly understand that. But people have been dreaming of going to Mars for centuries. And so we put it to you that this expedition can be different because this world that we have come to is different. You are all leaders of great nations, but on Mars, there are no borders. Only six human beings representing everyone. By the time you get back, the ISDA will have the operation cards translated and uploaded to us. Pretty basic stuff, they say. Our power supply should work just fine. So, how'd our new partner go over in Washington? Once the overnight poll showed the public overwhelmingly supports greater cooperation in space, it became a non-issue. Talks on formal cooperation for Project Olympus start next month. Well, tell Glenn he's gonna have to change the mission patch. We are gonna need a new flag. <laughs> no problem. Global cooperation. Who would have believed it? After that first day, I couldn't imagine anything going right. And then after this... Hey, this is the first thing on Mars. It'll probably end up in the Smithsonian. Well, then I must remember to sign it. Here, squeeze on this gently. Mm, you're looking good, Hiromi. Thanks. Atlantis Kiviok. Approaching the Chinese drill site. Copy that. For all the trouble this has caused, it's a lot smaller than I thought. You check it out, I'll get the tools. I guess this is the way in. Copy that. You jack the rims, and I'll get the stereo.
I suppose you were one of those kids who always knew you wanted to go into space. Not always. I was quite old, actually. It took me until I was seven. Ancient. So what happened? For my birthday, not a big deal in Japan. My parents gave me a microscope, monocular only, 600 power. But when my father put a drop of clear water on the slide and I looked at it, it was full of living things. And I couldn't get over it. You mean there's life everywhere, I asked? And he said, yes. Then I pointed up to the sky. Even there? Guess what he said? No idea. Exactly. As my father said, the universe is so vast, yet nobody knew if life existed anywhere but on Earth. And I knew someday I'd have to go see for myself. I bet you still have that microscope. Of course. And I'll tell you something else. It was made in China. A uh, tough week. With a Mars launch rapidly approaching, we have managed to cannibalize the Chinese drill and work in shifts in order to adapt it to our installation. Uh, so far, so good. It's now up to our three engineers to hybridize the electronics. Uh, I remain confident that we will be drilling again soon. Commander Richard Irwin, out. Could you explain your salinity theory again? It's exactly what you'd expect if the water there originated as an ocean and slowly evaporated. Eventually, the salt's becoming so concentrated. And what's to say we won't get the same result? We're drilling in the same region. Well, first, the Chinese site is in the center of the channel where the oldest, saltiest water would have collected. Ours isn't. Uh, and second? And second. Guys, guys. Can we concentrate on one thing at a time? We're still not getting anywhere with this. I'll check the input leads again. I'm sorry, I need a short break. Right. Are you holding up? I'm holding up. I know you're not going to let them get to you. No way. Remember how they said it was going to be easy to adjust to Martian days? How we'd reset our internal clocks with no problem? <laughs> yeah. Well... They lie. <laughs>
Okay, Jackie, let her go. Good work, guys. All right, first shift. Lucia, come here. They've done it. It's working. Since we're using the same borehole that Arjo made, if we're within five meters of water, which is what the estimate suggests... They'll be striking water soon. And we can watch it from here. Lucia, I really must be out there with them. You need to get in better shape. We're launching in ten days. I'd hate to have to leave you behind. Dr. Alarcon, may I say that I do appreciate your professional concern, but I assure you I'm... Forget it, Dr. Okuda. You're not going out. Our primary obstacle at this point is time, and so we're all putting in extra hours. Working nights is obviously more difficult and more dangerous, but with only nine sols left, we all felt that it was a step that we had to take. The drill is a composite of both systems, so it's not fully automated and has to be constantly monitored. But we were able to keep our drill platform, and the smaller Chinese drill works in our borehole. Now we just have to hope it holds up. Years of education and professional training, and here we are, lumbering around and laboring like drill riggers. <laughs> but I don't mind the extra hours, especially for you, Romy. But I'll probably be even happier than he when we do strike water. <laughs> I really did not think that our plea for cooperation would succeed. Maybe it's because I've studied too much history. But more often than not, political compromise and solutions only come from the barrel of a gun. I'm very happy to be wrong. Maybe there's some hope after all. I know how much we've already accomplished, but the great goal is to find life. And I admit it, part of me was happy with the Chinese findings. But now I feel that if our results are the same, then we have all lost something immeasurable. Good book? No, not really. Pawn to King Fool. Pawn to King Four. Knight to King's Bishop three. Knight to Queen's Bishop three. In conditions like these, Everything requires more effort and uh, more concentration. The fatigue factor kicks in earlier and becomes exponential, and working extra shifts is much harder, and therefore tires you out much quicker. It's really tough dragging yourself out there, and working and staying alert. You really have to fight to keep your focus. It's almost impossible for me to remain patient and composed now. The clock is ticking.
The long hours and the night EVAs are taking a toll. We're all very tired now, even at the start of our shifts. And that really worries me. But I'm sure that even if I did insist on reducing the EVAs, no one would support me. And I don't just mean us here on Mars. So we're going on schedule. I think it's better if I drive. No. Well, good night. Unbelievable. You never dreamed about going to space as a kid? When I grew up, it wasn't an option. Six kids in my family, I'm the only one who finished high school. So what made you apply to the astronaut program? I'm a flight surgeon. I wanted to work. Not too many Air Force craft have pilots anymore. All robotics, like that Chinese lander. Atlantis, Radisson. The drill's down again. We just lost another bit. Just when we're so close. Radisson, Atlantis, what are you guys doing? It's a third one already. They'll figure it. So do we pull up and change it now? We were just about to head back in. Nah, come on in. We'll take care of it in the morning. Copy that. We went away. Whoa, Rick. Let's think about this. If we wait, we're losing at least six hours, and we only have three saws left for drilling. Those extra hours could make the difference. Nah, we're all too tired, Hiromi. Rick, three saws. That's it. We need every minute of drilling we can get. Radisson Atlantis, change of plan. Stay put and pull her up. We're on our way to help. You now go, we'll let Macau sleep. Let me go with you, Rick. No way he's going, Rick. The EVA rules are clear, and I will not clear him. If you really apply the rules, you wouldn't permit any of us to go out anymore. Your arm is at 80% here, Romy, and the rules specifically state The that break you... is healed, and I'm not exhausted like everyone else. So we're probably even. Let me do this. It's why I'm here, Rick. Rick, I've worked my entire life for this. All right, Hiromi, let her rip. She goes. How do you crush your fingers in these things? You don't. You do it back at the hab. Okay, let's go. We've been out here long enough. Don't you think we should stay, Rick? Just in case. Oh, forget it, Hiromi. You already got me in enough trouble today. But we're this close. I'll to... tell you what. If it hits this time, you can come back. All right? All right. Let's go. Hey, look at that. It's small. 
water. Isn't it beautiful? It's sublimating. Atlantis drill site. We get water. Oh my god. We did it. We did it, guys. We did it. It's snowing on Mars. Just like stars. Mikhail! Mikhail! Get over here! We hit water! Okay, let's uh, bring the sample up and send another one down. Copy that. Mikhail, get over here! The cable's jammed. I'll check it. Okay, I'll get the tools. Mikhail! <laughs> it ceased. Are you serious? The pressure is increasing. Shut it down, Jackie. Copy that. Everybody back off. We're starting to really white out here. Secure the samples. Everyone back away. Can't see a thing. I don't like this. A Atlantis to drill team, what is your status? All crew respond. Make your way to the SCV lights. Hiromi, Jackie, Antoine, respond. Lucia to Rick, do you copy? I'm sure I don't have to tell you that our thoughts are with you up there. We know how hard this must be for you. You all did a great job and made us proud. So come on home. We're waiting for you. Out. Mr. Okuda, Mrs. Okuda, Hiromi told me about this stone he carried here from the summit of Mount Fuji. Japan's Olympus. And he told me a proverb. He who climbs Mount Fuji is a wise man, but he who climbs it twice is a fool. But your son also said that he would climb Mount Fuji again so he could return this stone so that the two great homes of the gods could be joined as one. Hiromi didn't think that was foolish. Neither do I.
Guys, if I could just have a minute. Uh, I know this is a difficult time, and I want to be very clear that the decision to allow Hiromi to take part in that EVA was mine, and mine alone. So what happened out there is solely my responsibility. And if anyone has anything they'd like to add regarding that, now would be the time. The journey home is not going to be an easy one. We're missing a member of our team. But we will go home, we will complete our mission in his honor, and keep his spirit alive. And that's it. Thank you. Master Armazon, two good lights. Confirm. 400 plus one. Ten seconds. Guidance sequence enabled. Three, two, one. Ignition. We did not really have a chance to mourn Hiromi's death, nor reorient ourselves as a team, minus a key member. All this due to preparation for re-entry into the Terra Nova and a major cleanup of the mold. The mold, combined with Mars dust, uh, seemed to be making everyone quite uncomfortable. But I feel that uh, once our respiratory tracks clear, we should be back to normal. Jackie and Mikhail are checking environmental, trying to determine the source of this mold. So all I need you to do is concentrate on the bypass. <coughs> so how long before we can fire up here? Before we can try, you mean? Yeah. I don't know yet. All right, well, let me know when you do. Lucia and I are going to finish unloading. This should not have happened. Yeah, a lot of things shouldn't have. I do feel I have to make it clear that I did not agree with Rick's decision to allow Hiromi to leave the HAB. EVAs are hard, as we all know, and I did not feel Hiromi was back up to full strength. No one could have predicted the drill accident would occur. But he shouldn't have been out there. I will find a time to speak with Rick about it sooner or later, privately. But uh, right now, with all our uh, issues, there's simply no time. Confirm docking caller release. Barking color release confirmed. <coughs> THC armed, RHC number two armed. <coughs> Stand by for auto set. Clean set. Mars has a new satellite. We missed some. And there's some more over there. Once we're up to speed, we'll have to do a full inspection. Right now, our priority is the TEI burn. 
I make no guarantees. If they don't fire, we have enough supplies to remain in orbit for two years. Well, think of it as incentive. Take us home, Antoine. Three. Two. This is nothing to applaud. 27 minutes, 48 seconds remain in this burn. something of a surprise but uh, mold is to spacecraft what dust is to your home <coughs> practically unavoidable it's penicillium chrysogenum it can cause severe respiratory distress the effects can last for weeks I had to clean the mold out of my basement once later I got really bad headaches and started wheezing like having asthma I just couldn't take a deep breath. Flight surgeon status report, February 28th, 2031. Terra Nova has been scrubbed from top to bottom and is now free from all visible contamination. But the crew's health continues to show worrisome signs of deterioration <laughs> and uh, we're still suffering from Persistent uh, respiratory irritation, sinus pain, headaches. Uh, which is consistent with our exposure to all the mold and possibly dust from Mars. After initial tests, I can determine no other cause for these symptoms. Flight surgeon Lucia Alarcon, out. <coughs> the bypass coming? Another 50 or 60 million kilometers and I should be finished. Okay, we'll keep at it. Mikhail, I want you to double check the environmental system. Again? Yeah, every sensor, every scrubber, everything. <clears throat> Something in here is making us all sick. I want to know what that is. Okay? Fine. <coughs> uh, we'll do it all again. <clears throat> What this time? Antihistamine. We tried those already. Now we're gonna try them again. Go ahead, take them.
how does everything look? <laughs> it's good. Everything's fine. <laughs> what? I've done tests on all of us. There is no identifiable infection. It doesn't make sense. Well, it's like you said, it's probably just a reaction to all that Mars dust <clears throat> or the mold. You know, that wouldn't be the first time. There's more to it than respiratory irritation. Look. I hate to bring this up. But after Hiromi's accident, when you went into the Mars Hab, your suits were covered in slush. Mm -hmm. No, I know. I've thought about that. Lucia, you and I both know that the chances of us being infected by something from Mars are extremely slim. So let's just wait for a couple of days and let's just see if we get better. Okay? What if we don't? I ran every test again. Oxygen levels, water quality, checked for trace pollutants. Everything is nominal. Well, obviously, we're missing something. Perhaps it's obvious what we're missing. We've tried antibiotics. We're still getting weaker. Maybe it's time to consider the other possibility. Mm. That's great. Something from Mars? Is that what you mean? I don't want to be an alarmist, but is there anyone who hasn't already thought about it? Okay, L let's say, for the sake of argument, <coughs> that it is a possibility. What are our options? Not many. If it's something that all of Lucia's tests cannot even recognize. Well, there is one thing. But I'd need your permission to break one of the seals and test a sample. You know that we can't do that. If we can't identify a contaminant from one of those samples, there's a possibility that someone on the ground could find an antidote. I'm sorry, it's out of the question. We're all well aware of the protocols. Everything from below the surface of Mars can only be opened in a receiving lab. <coughs> If we open a seal, even one, then everything in this vehicle, including us, become presumed biohazards. And if not, we'll be presumed dead? Listen, I'm willing to consider the possibility of alien contamination, but not without proof. You provide that for me, and then we'll talk about breaking a seal. <laughs> Rick insists on having proof. 
before opening a sample. He knows damn well that without opening one, I can't prove that it is alien contamination. And I can't prove that it isn't. I've read all the previous mission reports. And I know that late in the mission, crew members sometimes suffer psychosomatic illness. <coughs> but this can be psychological. Not with all of us experiencing the exact same symptoms. It just doesn't make any sense. If we do nothing, we may die. If we open a sample, the best we can look forward to is maybe months, years, or even the rest of our lives in quarantine. <coughs> it's a difficult call. Not one I would want to make. You have to ask. <coughs> oh, just checking. Why are you here so late? sample without permission. <clears throat> well, yeah, it did cross my mind. Fear can make people do crazy things sometimes. <coughs> uh, sometimes. What? I am sure that you can go and get some sleep. Hmm. Go. What do you think? Am I wrong about this, Mikhail? you has recorded a message for school kids since you left Mars. So I know the agency is hiding something. Bull says they're not, but he is not a good liar. And neither are you. I talked to the other families, and you're all... None of you look your best. And I don't think it's a good idea for Adam to see you like this. I don't want to frighten him. But I want to know what's happening. You come home safe. <coughs> I love you.
and to Richard Irwin. We appear to have reached a stage where I can no longer guarantee our safe return to Earth. We're all very ill, as you know, and because there is no known pathogen causing this sickness, the crew seems to be unanimous in its desire to open one of the Mars water samples. I want to make this statement in case this mission fails. And right now, there are many indicators that it may. Commander Irwin is sick, as we all are, and is currently unable to make the right decision. Uh, Mikhail uh, continues to stand by me. Uh, but even this is something that uh, I can't ultimately be sure of. Fortunately, Dr. Alarcon is willing to say what must be said. But to be able to act, we must all agree that it is the right decision to confront Commander Irwin. If I cannot prevent this from happening, then you will, of course, be forced to deal with a ship and a crew that are deemed biohazard. But if we are unable to find out what is making us sick soon, then you may end up dealing with a crew that is so seriously compromised that we will not be able to make it home <laughs> at all. For future expeditions, emotional distress has direct impact on decision-making. In Commander Irwin's case, I strongly suspect his guilt concerning Dr. Rakuda is making it more difficult for him to maintain rational judgment. Therefore, in future, I believe even more time should be spent in training on the psychological aspect, since it has direct impact on the success or failure of any mission. I'm not sure if so. <coughs> he trusts you. <coughs> yeah, I know. I know. But he will listen to you. It's a dangerous decision. It's, it's big. been talking and uh, you should know that we intend to make a formal request to ground to test a sample. I see. It's time to stop ignoring the problem. <laughs> it won't just go away. Well, I'm sorry that you see things that way. But as long as I'm commanding this mission, it'll be me who makes the command decisions. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. We've been through that before. By all the operational rules you love so much. Hiromi should have never been given permission to leave the hab. Now you're gambling the rest of our lives. On another questionable decision? Look, you can make this hard or you can make this easy, but we need to make that call. No, we don't. Not without my authority. Attention, solar monitor confirms flare eruption. Central, predict magnitude. We have less than an hour before the proton storm reaches us. Let's prep for safe mode. <laughs> Yeah. 
Houston, Terra Nova. We are just a few minutes away here from safing the communications. The coronal mass ejection should be on us in a day or so. But the proton storm, it's moving much faster. Uh, we estimate that it will reach us in approximately 30 minutes. <laughs> but everything should be buttoned up by then, and we will be safely in our cabins. We will contact you in a day or two, or when possible. Terra Nova out. He's not all alone. Uh, yeah. It's just us. Just now. Just for this moment. It's the one thing they couldn't prepare us for, isn't it? So far from everything. Earth doesn't even exist anymore. Yeah. You're not alone. to make that request to break the seal with or without Rick's permission. I know Antoine will support me and I trust the others will follow. <laughs> Let's face the facts. We're all slowly dying and this may be my last entry. Even if we survive the storm, I don't see how we can go on like this much longer. <clears throat> so maybe this is how it all ends. <laughs> From the irony, the extra shielding of our cabins protects us from the radioactive storm on the outside. <clears throat> but while we wait, we may die from the invisible threat on the inside.
Bowers down, trying to identify the source of the problem. Great. <laughs> Secondary bus is offline throughout the vehicle. <coughs> that one uh, is working on it, but every every system we shut down for safe mode <coughs> will not start up again. Nothing happened. I know. You're a good cosmonaut. <coughs> I'll take it back where it belongs. Hey, hey, hey I need some help here. You all right? Lucia. Come on. Lucia. He collapsed in my cabin. <coughs> Put him on the bed. <laughs> Antoine, what's the status on that power? One, two, three. I'm just about to make the last connection. And one, two, three. <sighs> well, stay on it. We need that power back. I'm on it. <coughs> Barely breathing. Mikhail, can you hear me? Rick? Rick? Jackie? You all right? No, I feel dizzy. I think I'm, I'm gonna pass out. Take it easy. Short trip to smoke detectors? The smoke detector said there are no combustion byproducts. No smoke at all. We, we must be getting false readouts. It's not Mars that's killing us, it's our own technology.
So, every time a board failed, the master system reset to a default mode with a standard date, January 26, 2030, the day you left Earth orbit. Whatever the monitors picked up, it didn't matter, because the only readings that were ever reported were the ones from launch day. Sorry again, guys, but we're on to it, and we'll get back to you soon. Houston out. New code from ground uploaded and installed. Gear scrubbers? Working again. It is carbon monoxide. We still need to find the source of the CO. I'm gonna start with the flight deck. And <coughs> I want you both to work with ground. And make sure we're not faced with any other surprises. On to that. What have you found? Uh, the wiring to and from the fan has been overheating. Look. Uh, of course. And if these wire burns occurred, there could be others. All releasing carbon monoxide. That the faulty sensors never picked up on. Man, a few more hours and that seal would have killed us all. Yeah. How are you feeling? Good. Very good. I was talking to Rick and then suddenly I was in Sochi on Black Sea. <laughs> Beautiful beaches. You would love. What's wrong? Mount Fuji. Mm. Oh, the gods. I forgot. You do not believe, huh? <laughs> maybe, maybe just a little, huh? Maybe we could, uh... Maybe we could climb it together someday. Huh? Put the stone back for Hiromi. Hmm? Poor hero, me. <clears throat> Take a deep breath. <clears throat> and we found other wires with the same problem. All intermittently adding undetected CO into our environment. And all poisoning us in small doses. I could feel myself fading like I was falling asleep, but against my will, and that was frightening. I was wrong. There's no way around that. But I was doing what I thought I had to do. The condition of the crew still concerns me. We are physically and mentally exhausted. If we have any further problems, we may not be up to dealing with them. Status report, August 20, 2031. 
And I'm happy to say that there is nothing much to report compared to the first 14 months of this mission. The last five have been practically a vacation. All systems are running smoothly. The crew is happy and healthy. And in just 12 days, we will finally be home. Commander Richard Irwin, out. Rick, Antoine, I'm on the fly deck. Could you come down? Yeah, what is it, Antoine? Is it a problem? I'd say so. Well, I've checked and double checked the bypass, and it should work fine. What? Seems there's a problem with the supply module. It's not giving me any response from the entails. You're sure on this? Absolutely. Attention all crew, prep for spin down. I'm coming up on the electrical supply module. Here it is. That's where arm two hit. That's the problem. The dent from the arm collision has turned into a crack, possibly as a result of extreme temperature variations. And the crack in the cover must have compromised the shielding over the electrical supply module. So the flare likely damaged the FETs in the engine controllers. When the time comes to fire the engines, we may not be able to initiate the burn. The return capsule might not survive re-entry. We need to replace the damaged FETs. Not with the arm. The end defector is not designed for that kind of precision work. Well, that's not what I was thinking. We need to prep for an EVA. Let's spin up and work out a plan. Well, the propulsion module is a high radiation environment. We can't do an EVA anywhere near it. Yeah. Well, it's not as if we have much choice. The cabin doors, they're lined. Couldn't we use them as a radiation shield? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Well, you and I can get to work on that. Well, Jackie and Mikhail figure out a way to attach them to the arm. Antoine zero in on those boards. We have only one chance to get this right. All right. Copy that. This will fit through the airlock and make a good radiation shield. But we'll need two of them. I'll take down mine. This upcoming EVA is the most crucial that any one of us has ever done. We are now only a few days from Earth, which leaves us very little time to prep, coordinate, and complete this repair. Cosmic radiation is also a problem. We'll be constantly monitoring levels and keeping to a strict time schedule. All EVAs require perfection, both in coordination and execution. There's little or no room for error. But in this case, failure is simply not an option. If we fail to make this repair, then we will not be able to slow sufficiently to allow a safe re-entry of the return capsule into the Earth's atmosphere. The doors are quite large, but easy to manipulate in zero-g. We did not have difficulty attaching them to the arm with a spare grapple fixture. It went like clockwork. The shield is 
shield is locked in position now. Terra Nova, Houston. I copy your telemetry and confirm you are go for EVA. Copy that. Lucia, final go. I have two good signals. Rick Antoine, you are go for egress. Copy that. We're opening the hatch. We're both out. Proceeding toward the truss. We have you now on video. No need to rush. Not a problem, Makai. Out here, rushing is not an option. I'm tethering to Star Truss. Mikhail, confirm time remaining. You're making good time. You have five hours to go. Copy that. start of the star truss. Rick is proceeding to the repair site. Copy that. I'm watching your dosimeter. I'll let you know exactly when you're at your limit. Copy that. Arriving at the ESN. Copy that. You are on schedule. Consumables are nominal. I'm tethered in position. umbrella, Jackie. It's like a day at the beach up here. You stay there longer than 90 minutes, you'll start tanning from the inside. Copy that. Okay, uh, Rick, uh, you're at your limit. You've got to turn it over to Antoine now. I'm almost there. <sighs> Pivoting the cover. off. Copy that. I'm heading back. Good job, Rick.
I'm monitoring your levels. Tethering to trust. Copy that. I'm tethered at the repair site. Everything is well prepared, my compliments. Did he just say something nice? Must be radiation sickness. stage. Antoine, standing by for board verification. Copy that. Check board twenty one. All green. One more board to connect. You've got a few minutes, Max. Circuit check, board 22. All green. Good work, Antoine. You have a fan club now. Not bad for an engineer. You're also at your radiation limit, Antoine. Head back now. Just one last check. That's it. Done. Nailed it. And kiss this thing. Antoine? What is it? I've got my glove. What's it caught on? Antoine, you need my help? Antoine, status. I've lost telemetry. Antoine. 
I'm on tethering. Hot one. Hot one, respond. Can you hear me? Almost there. Hot one, can you hear me? I've got it. Gathering on. Rick, you have to hurry. Your levels are out of the safe zone. This comm is down. He's unconscious. We're heading back to the airlock. Copy that. I will meet you there. Free cool off. Rods active. Earth slow down burn minus ten seconds. Secondary coolant system. Secondary coolant system enabled. And now I think we go home.
You saved us, Antoine. We owe you. I didn't do it for you. All I wanted was to save my engine. I don't believe you anymore. You know why? Because you built your engine to take us to the planet. Maybe someday to the stars. We each had our reasons. Our dreams. You made it possible for us to achieve them. to have been a part of it. <laughs>